All right, I've played almost 100 games of Season 7 so far over the past two weeks, so I have a pretty good idea of where the meta is. As always, the list on the right side is based on my experience in GM1 and Top 500 on the North American ladder, and the list on the left is targeted towards the lower metal ranks. I would say the Plat, the Diamond, and the Masters are kind of like a gradient in between the two lists. Remember, these tier lists are just my opinion, you're entitled to your own opinion, and please just use the list to help inform your decision, but don't let the list make your decisions for you all right got that sit back relax grab a coffee and listen to me ramble for the next half hour diva is kind of in the middle i'd say b plus good she's not overpowering but she's not bad at all right she's definitely still a great pick on maps that require good high and low ground control without the extremely long sight line so think like blizzard world first point especially nabani go with that Okay, Doomfist has this perception from Doom mains that he's always bad, mostly because of his buggy movement, but the hero as a whole from someone who doesn't play Doomfist is that I actually think he's pretty strong right now. I'm gonna put him in A tier for both lists. Last season six, he received uh, some buffs to his Seismic Slam cooldown, which also helped him build more over health as a result with higher Seismic Slam uptime, of course, right? And remember his block actually got buffed where it now stops the explosion damage like Tracer Pulse, Cast Nade, uh, Echo Sticky Bomb. So honestly, I think he solidified himself quite well here. For Junker Queen, she's pretty solid. I'm gonna put her at B plus for both lists. She's good, right? Especially after the Zarya nurse, but we'll see after the Zarya is still pretty good too. Uh, that one is a tough matchup, but of course it's a team game, right? If it's just a single Zarya, you can learn how to play around that. Um, since Baptiste and Alari are the top two supports, which we'll get to later, there's actually less Anas as well. Ana plus Zarya on the enemy team does spell a little trouble for Queen, but you know, the less frequency of anti-nades with less Anas, which means uh, Queen is probably like a solid pick and brawl, as long as her tough matchups aren't being played. All right, the horse, Orissa. She received a small nerf this season to her Fortify, and Ilari's single target healing from her beam was nerfed as well, right from 120 to 105 HP per second, and that slightly affected Orissa's survivability. In lower ranks, where the target focus is all over the place, I feel that Orissa still feels very strong in A plus for most players, but in my experience in the past two weeks in the high ranks, it does seem like the other tanks have taken over and it kind of puts her in the mm, i would say like the good category the b plus right solid pick totally viable but not as great as she was last season when we couple that with may being reverted back to her old version getting walled off in brawl right now can be a little annoying as well okay ramatra is in the state where i think the public perception isn't aligning with his actual strength he was actually buffed this season where his nemesis form's uptime is even higher as it comes up every 7 seconds instead of 8. With the surplus of rhyme lovers in lower ranks, I'm a firm believer he's actually pretty strong in the A tier as he plays well into Rhine and maybe just a tad worse in the top 500 level. Maybe like B+, still good, but just not really popular at this time. So, according to the last developer blog for Season 7, Aaron Keller, the game director, did say that Ryan is the best performing tank in the lower skill tiers, probably because simply putting up your shield and enemy players not respecting his strength up close and they get swung on like three times, you probably die, and that does a lot of- that does wonders at this rank. However, at the high ranks, the perception is that Ryan actually needs buffs, but this may be a hot take. I don't actually think he's that bad, and I don't even think he needs buffs right now. He's actually decent as a brawl tank, especially with Mei back to how she was, and I've kind of seen the Ryan brawl kind of go hard, especially on some control maps. Now, if we're talking about the frustration of playing Ryan, that's a different can of worms, right? Like, try playing Ryan against not only like a tougher tank matchup like Ram, and there isn't even that much Ramatra right now. Orissa, yeah, a little annoying, but try playing Ryan against Mei, Bastion, Orissa, Zen, like all of them combined. That's tough, of course, but I actually think Ryan fills his brawl niche pretty well. And that's why I have him at A+, very strong for most players, and probably middle of the pack as well. Like he's, he's B+, he's good for everyone for the top 500 level. Roadhog is at the bottom, as usual, in the D tier for uh, most players, but I'm actually going to slightly bump him up to C tier, a little below average in the high elos. Maybe Flats has polluted my mind since I dueled with him for a lot of my games this season, and not going to lie, he tends to swap to Roadhog pretty often. And honestly, it's been working. 
And the reason why is he situationally does it. It's mostly because of the less frequency of Ana's being played, since it's a lot of Baptiste and Alari. And as soon as Ana is picked, though, uh, flat swap. So for, for the advice for everybody else, as soon as they have an Ana, you should swap off. But if they don't, <laughs> Roadhog's kind of just like a big damage sponge. He doesn't really die. And since his one shot is nerfed, he doesn't really have like the one shot threat like consistently. You can still do it, of course, especially if they take a little bit of damage before, but you sort of just play it to annoy the other tank, or you can combo it with your own Mei. And since Mei is being played a lot more, you pull someone in, you have your Mei wall them up so they can't retreat. And it actually turns out to work in quite a lot of matchups. Roadhog also plays pretty well into all the Doomfists lately as well. So yeah, I think I'm okay putting him at C tier instead of D tier. I know, I know, hot take. Uh, but that being said, the Roadhog rework is scheduled to be a little later in the mid season seven patch. So probably mid to late November, but as it stands right now, C tier for uh, top 500 and D tier for everybody else. Okay, Sigma is the biggest winner of this patch. He stood the test of time being a reliable solid tank. I never actually placed Sig very low in previous tier lists and with the other tanks being nerfed this patch like Zarya, Orisa, it's now Sigma's time to shine as a very, very solid, strong tank. I'm gonna put him at A plus here for the top 500 level, right? With Baptiste being a top support, along with Ilari as the popular poke replacement for Zen, Sigma has risen to the top uh, in top 500. The leaderboards came out just uh, yesterday and the evidence is clear. I mean, look at this. For everyone else though, perfect team comps with the right support duo lineups, you know, aren't always in the cards for your average rank game. So I still think Sigma is good, but not very strong, but probably still just strong though, right? A tier, still a really respectable ranking in this tier list. Okay, Winston is sort of gatekept by Bastion right now, and he isn't popular, at least right now, in the North American ladder as the dive option, because Doomfist has taken that role. Doesn't mean he's bad himself, right? He's still a good tank, and he's just waiting for his time to shine again when the other heroes get adjusted and the supports change a little bit. However, like every other season tier list, I firmly believe he's below average for most players because of the three parameters to success, you know, resources, coordination, decisiveness. So I think he's below average again in the everybody else rank and for top 500, um, I think he's okay right now. He's okay, but certainly the least play tank I've seen this season or one of the least few. Okay, Ball received a small buff this season to his weapon spread, making him a little bit deadlier at the mid ranges and a somber rework. Sombra traditionally, uh, tr traditionally has been a pretty strong counter towards Ball, but the rework actually works in favor of the Ball, and that matchup isn't as bad as it was before because you can now chase her a lot easier because of the translocator change and punish her. And for those reasons, I actually think Ball's faring a little better this season. Nothing spectacular between the B and C tier for now, probably leaning towards B tier. I'll put him in okay because dedicated Ball players at this level can certainly make him work when they recognize the good matchups. And for everyone else, though, I still think he's below average. Nothing really changed there. There's too much downtime for, uh, you know, uh, you know, your average silver ball player with, you know, all that extra enemy healing as well with all the healing creep. It's just ball can't cut through any of that without a good, meaningful timed engagement. So C tier over here, B tier in top 500. Okay, Zarya had a few of her bubble buffs reverted after the huge like uh, slew of buffs for the uh, projected bubble for season six, but they did keep the bubble cooldown buff which is at 8 seconds right now instead of 10 seconds. If we do the math, that is a 20% cooldown reduction. That is actually still very massive and is part of the reason why she's still being played a lot. And, I, and I'm going to keep her in A tier for both lists at strong. Okay, Ash is still a solid DPS. You know, burst damage is good. Throwing dynamite through BAP window is extra good since BAP is everywhere. She's, you know, good. All in all, good everywhere. B plus for both tier lists. And Bob plays himself. That's all I need to say. Okay, Bastion. He's a hot topic still because he received so many buffs in season six. I think eight in total, right? But he had half of them reverted since and it was really oppressive at the time. But I do want to say that I personally think half his viability only comes from him alone in his own kit. The other half of why he's ridiculous is the healing sustain that he gets from his supports. When you multiply like either a Life Weaver pocketing, a Mercy pocket, or like an Alari pylon pumping with the Baptiste and the lamp around the corner with this ironclad passive, which is a 20% damage reduction with a baseline of what, 300 HP that he has and armor? I mean, come on, he's just really hard to deal with and kill. And that's why I think he's still very popular right now. It's skyrocketed him over the, these past couple of months. So despite those recent nerfs, 
the healing itself hasn't changed too much so i'm actually going to keep him in the s tier for the everyone else tier list and still a tier still strong for top 500 right players at this level can sort of play around him you know especially with that configuration timing when he transforms and his giant hitbox does mean he will take a lot of damage i know he's getting a lot of healing but he will also take a lot of damage because he's got a big hitbox and good players don't really miss with their shots right if a bastion is peeking obviously you don't want to counter peek but there will be times to jiggle peek and maybe punish him a little bit i say this as a baptiste player because if he's not paying attention to me i can window and dps him on an off angle and he can actually go down pretty quick but that's a very you know specific scenario i'm just saying that's why i believe he's a tier for top 500 and s tier for everyone else Okay, Cassidy's identity has shifted to becoming like a tanky close range damage hero, right? The uh, buff he had this season for season seven gives him 75% damage reduction when he rolls, which allows him to tank big damage bursts like Diva Bomb or Junkrat Tire. That being said, it's a very long range pokey Sigma meta at the high levels, right? And he's pretty mid in most matchups. If you want to play the close range stuff in Brawl, you might as well play like May, Sim, Bastion. They're just better options. Um, the only niche I can see uh, cast fill in is probably against like Ball, which is not that popular. Maybe Winston, not that popular. And Doomfist, which is popular. So, you know, he does have that role to fill against Doom comps. So I don't think he's like below average. He's just okay right now. Okay is just mid, a little bit below mid. For everyone else, maybe a tier up. I think he's, he's, he's pretty good. He's all right. Mag Grenade is pretty simple. He's tanky. And uh, people don't play against uh, with, with effective range or perfect poke comps against him. So he kind of just is a bit more of an all-rounder there. For Echo, she's always been a solid, I would say an A-tier hero for top 500 players. They can get a lot done if she's left unchecked. She's not as reliant on Mercy, and uh, she has a pretty high skill uh, floor. So good players, they duplicate the right time. They run through the combo, can burst someone down. I think good Echo players can definitely pop off and be strong. For everyone else... She's okay, maybe B tier because of the skill floor. Now Genji, he's in this interesting spot where half the community believes he's awful and sucks against all this heal and grief, which is partially true, but the other half of the community, like myself, actually thinks he's kinda good. Um, I'm gonna put him in B plus. I think he's good, right? He can absolutely punish positional mistakes and honestly even punish Bastions at the high level with good deflect timing and then he can also assassinate Alaris if the pylon isn't set up for her and obviously not every single game has BAP Alari a lot of them do but when they don't you know you can still nano blade and do uh, a lot of work with them for the other tier lists same reasons I would also put him in B plus he's good and he's also really fun okay as much as I personally hate Hanzo his one shot right now is sort of a necessary evil in this you know meta of healing creep his dragon is a great combo or a zoning tool, of course. He's got he's a long range sniper, which complements the Sigma Pokey meta on a lot of the maps, and he can help take down uh, the uh, large amount of Bastions running around with a Storm Arrow. So I think I'm actually gonna put him in strong for both lists, A tier. Junkrat, Junkrat, Junkrat. I actually think he's pretty decent right now, believe it or not. I've seen him way more in rank this season than I have when compared to the previous like three seasons. Again, with the whole idea of all the support and healing, you can't outheal burst damage, right? If you instantly one shot someone, delete someone with the with the grenade and a concussive mine, then you know you guarantee to kill. And rip tire is almost a you know a very effective vault if they don't shoot it down. So I'm gonna put him in. He's good. I'm gonna put him in B plus in top 500 and maybe one up into the strong tier. Uh, for everyone else a lot of players i wouldn't say they complain about junk crap but it's really cheesy if he just randomly spams and gets kills and you know good junks know how to combo now the trap in a good spot almost guarantees a kill it's a very he's a very annoying character which kind of matches his uh, hero identity a very you know maniacal laugh he's the evil may may has been reverted uh back to how she was pre-season i think five uh, where they gave her all this like complicated, you know, build up enough uh, deep chill passive and pop up with the icicle. She's back to the 100 DPS beam, which means she's back as a brawl comp staple. I've even seen her appear in the Sigma poke comps, right? As one of the flex DPSs. She just sits there and pokes with the icicles instead of, you know, brawling and going all into the wall. And then you play the poke mate until the enemy makes positional mistakes. And, you know, in ranked play, people make tons of mistakes, more so than professional pro play. And then boom, a good wall and it's all over is almost a guaranteed pick uh pick off excuse me i'm gonna say she's actually strong a tier i'm in top 500 and for everyone else strong for both
Farah. Farah's strength is all about staying up in the sky, right? And continuously shooting rockets to pressure, right? Pew, pew, pew. Where Echo is, you know, a kind of a chill and wait. And then you, a timed cooldown rotation where you do your flight. Then you do your entire combo with the sticky bomb into a beam um, at much closer ranges. If there's no mercy to pocket the Farah here, though, I think all this BAP and Alari hitscan duel in the support lineup uh, that's really popular makes it really hard for Farah to get value. But Farah's like bobbing up and down is easier to pick out of this guy than the, you know, the up and down version of Echo. So, uh, I mean, that's just one really bad matchup example, but that's not always the case. But overall, I'd say Farah's like, okay, right? Not that popular on the North American ladder. I rarely see her right now. If I see the flying archetype, it's usually Echo. For everyone else, maybe I'll bump her up to B+. I think it, the opposite is the case in, uh, you know, in the other ranks, probably the low metal ranks, where it's more Far Mercy and less Echo, because Echo is a higher skill floor. And traditionally, uh, Far Mercy has been very annoying to play against. It's a it's this OG combo, and especially on console, you know, where uh, Far Mercy can probably dominate because hitscan controller aim isn't as reliable. Reaper. Reaper's honestly fine. In B tier. Put him in okay. Especially with the Zarya bubble comp where you just kind of set him up and he goes to work. However, I think I've seen him like two times in the past hundred games I've played this season. It was from like a Reaper one trick. He's just not that popular, at least in my experience. And he's it's probably because he's one dimensional and boring for a lot of players. For everyone else though, I'd argue he's strong actually in the A tier. Uh, because he's 250 HP, free escape tool, and Wraith can get a lot done, especially uh, if they don't, you know, burst him down. He 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 can he can gap close and close the distance without getting punished a lot easier here, which allows him to be uh, more effective overall. Sojourn, probably the best DPS in top 500 right now. She's reliable poke pressure. Then she's got that burst damage with the rail, and it's again one shots or not one shots, but big bursts is kind of necessary in this heal creep environment. So I'm gonna put her in. The A plus tier, very strong in top 500, but only in the B tier for everyone else, down two or three tiers. She's okay, but just not the best because the rail shots are just not as consistent in the lower tiers, and there's a lot of downtime to build up to that rail. And if you don't hit that rail after the build up, it kind of like makes or break th breaks the character. And I think the stats have proven that season over season. It's been seven seasons of this. We've always seen Sojourn perform worse at lower ranks and way better at high ranks. And there we go. Soldier. Is honestly a pretty reliable DPS. I actually see a healthy amount of them in top 500. Actually, a lot more than I when I gave that I gave credit for once I like browse through the top 500 leaderboard. Um, and he's actually got surprisingly good burst if he hits that helix rocket. And if you don't hit it, it's like a six second cooldown. It's not that bad. When you couple that with the sprint, right? That's good. Obviously, horizontal mobility, but good soldier players at the high levels uh, take advantage of that sprint and they can get to good positions, good high grounds. And if they're getting, you know, pressured out of there, they can reposition fairly quickly and they can be really annoying if left unchecked. Soldier's not overpowering right now, but he's so versatile. I actually think he's pretty strong in A tier in top 500 and arguably A plus. I may be smoking the good stuff, putting him in A plus here, but. That's just my feel for him. Um, there's more Mercy players in the lower tiers for the damage boost, and Soldier is not that reliant on supports in general because he has Biotic Field to keep himself sustained. Uh, Attack Visor actually gets better value at the lower ranks here because uh, people don't use natural cover as well. He's just a safe, strong pick, so that's why I put him at very strong. Sombra, woo! The rework honestly was a success in my opinion, in terms of fun, at least for me, right? I found that I enjoyed her a lot more as time went on on the rework whereas i barely touched old sombra and all her like minor reworks over the years of overwatch one because of her playstyle back then just kind of bored me but this new virus and stuff has actually been really really good now aaron keller's uh recent blog post last week did say sombra performed better at low ranks and kind of tapered and flattened out around masters at around 47 percent win rate which actually holds true to my experience as well i've seen her a lot in ranked uh, over the past two weeks. Granted, a lot of players were probably forcing her to just to try to learn her and all that stuff. But on in the same vein, as Sombra players were learning how to play her, good players are also learning how to deal with her. And I found that Sombra only dominated me like twice out of like the 30 games I played against her. And that was when uh, there was a whole team comp built around or uh, built around her, excuse me. She was like played in complete dive. It was against Doomfist, Tracer, Sombra or Doomfist, Genji Sombra, if I remember correctly, where my team just got absolutely smoked and I felt 
the Sombra's pressure. But in the games where like the Sombra player was just playing it as like a flex DPS and trying to do their own thing, I didn't find her that bad. It was actually super easy to like, you know, respond because uh, and turn around and you know heal the other support if she jumped the other support or myself I would not play like the two supports that get owned by her like Zen and maybe Lucio maybe Mercy depending on where they're playing Yeah, her I think Sombra's rework her biggest weakness is actually teamwork and people turning around right and most supports at the high level are able to turn around and respond to the, both the virus and the unstealth chase her down she can't show translocate uh, to the other side of the map so I actually think she's just simply okay like a little bit mid uh, at the high ranks, but the sentiment is the quite the opposite Well, Aaron Keller kind of confirmed in his blog post But I read a couple of uh, reddit posts and the people from the community in my community saying that she's so unfun to play against because and she's so strong because she 200 to zeros most squishies uh, With the virus right if they land the virus. They're just dead because nobody helps or peels them but again that's because people uh, in the lower metal ranks overall their game sense and adjustment to turn around isn't as refined here I'm sorry, that's just the cold hard truth, and therefore she finds more success at the lower metal rank, so... Arguably strong. Uh, remember, this tier list on the left is targeted mostly towards the lower metal ranks. I'm not gonna make a tier list for every single rank, but you can kind of infer in between Diamond and Masters and, and even low GM that it's probably, you know, good right in the middle once you get a little bit better. But yeah, right now I'm gonna put her in strong, on average. Symmetra. Mm, I'm gonna settle her into the good tier B plus in top 500 and still Pretty strong in a tier for everyone else. She's played a lot right now in the brawl comps, right? Like Symmetra may on control and even flashpoint She's got decent poke with her secondary fire doing a hundred damage a pop now with the buffs from two seasons ago or two or three seasons ago Against all the Sigmas being played lately playing just picking Symmetra kind of pressures the enemy Sigma to drop his shield more often so that um, his shield doesn't give Symmetra the free uh, level 3 beam and remember that uh, Symmetra actually reloads when primary firing off a shield as well That's like a niche Symmetra like a lot of people who don't play Symmetra don't even realize that but Symmetra players should know this but it's another thing so Yeah, I think sim is actually uh, good B plus and then uh, for top 500 and a tier for everyone else Torbjorn's buffs last season were actually reverted this season, but I still think he's a kind of like a crafty pick. He's got decent poke with his long range Cheeto, strong up close with the shotgun. His turret is still annoying, not as bad as it used to be, but his ultimate, which I actually think is the best part of his kit, is really good to shut down engagements. And when team fights are all about like big ultimate uh, tempos and stuff, uh, Torb has his place. So I actually think B, uh, sorry, Torb is good in the B plus tier. Good. And a little bit better. Arguably a plus for everyone else because again, even though his turret isn't as bad as it used to be It's basically a sixth player. No one shoots it down uh, It annoys the crap out of people and he's also got a big HP pool with overload and he's good up close The shotgun's kind of free. So yeah, put him in a plus there tracer um, In top 500 I didn't see her a lot near the end of mid to end season 6 when there was a lot more bash and Orissa's like tracers couldn't do everything uh, do anything uh, with the obscene amount <clears throat> let me redo the tracer part cut that part out Tracer in top 500 has seen a slow resurgence. She wasn't popular at all near the end of season six due to the obscene amount of healing, you know, all the Bastions and Orissas. It was just hard to get consistent value. But now that Doom Dive is a little better this season as an indirect result of everything else happening, I'm gonna bring her back up again to the A tier. She's strong, uh, especially cause you know, good Tracer player has high mechanical skill. She's slippery, off angle pressure. And yeah, for everyone else though, okay. B tier. I kind of put her in B tier almost every season, like B average and below, simply because of that high skill floor uh, required to generate good value. And there's actually nothing wrong with that. I think Overwatch is so dynamic in a the game, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having heroes get less value when you're not as good with them and more value if you're better. And then some heroes are simpler, which get better value at lower ranks, but less at the higher ranks. That's totally cool with me. And that's just the, uh, the, 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 the archetype that Tracer falls under. Widowmaker. Widowmaker's range was nerfed a lot in season five, and I originally had her placed a lot lower back then because I always thought, you know, one one jump away or one dive away means like she's very vulnerable, which is true. But I think good widow players have adjusted to the new range. The one shot threat right now is again a necessary evil in this healing creep meta. When supports dish out so much sustain, the only way to cut through it is to just delete them. So I've kind of brought Widow back up. I think I had her below average before. I brought her back up to good, B plus tier in top 500. But be it, she is really squishy, right? At 175 HP, teams can completely switch comps and just jump the Widow. 
And if you're a Widow player here, you have to be prepared to swap. Uh, which a lot of good Widow players do swap. Unless they're exclusive Widow one trick, there are a few on the ladder that I've seen. But all the hitscan players who flex Widow, they play it for like, you know, as long as it's viable. But when it looks like it's not being effective, they do swap off. For everyone else, maybe down a tier to just okay to B. She goes from B plus to B in the level for everybody else. It's it's just mostly player dependent here, right? It just depends if your Widow's either Smurfin, which is like a god hitscan player with no game sense. Who knows? But yeah. And on to supports. Ana just the best designed hero in the game sometimes she can be uh you know a little annoying depending on the meta but i don't actually think she's that problematic right now believe it or not i still think she's strong though like an a tier for both lists and works when you know we're not playing the perfect optimal meta comp however when we get to the next support hero baptiste you know he did have his regen burst uh slightly nerfed in the mid season six but he's still the star of the sustained healing meta he can keep up in brawl comps you know with the reinhardt the rams the orissas you can keep up with the poke with sigma like he's just the core piece in a lot of it because he just does it all right he's got high dps high survivability high healing and a great ultimate so he's just a clear winner s tier for sure in top 500 however for everyone else i will say he's a bit mechanically intense uh, especially if we're talking about weaving in dps and healing looking up looking down since you need good target acquisition so good aim good crosshair control to look up look down look up look down to do uh the damage and healing style and if you're just you know a metal rank player i'm not saying you can't do it but you know if you're just heal botting as baptiste and you haven't mastered this crosshair or this this mechanic or this this crosshair control his value will go down because i think if you're just going to heal bot you might as well play life weaver or moria for that and you know for that reason not s tier maybe down one to a plus still very strong though brig brig is a good hero in top 500 i'm gonna say b plus and she kind of goes up and down the ratings uh, depending on the meta. She did get buffed this season where the whip shot does 80 damage instead of 70. So she's really good when she's good, especially against Dive and Winston. Uh, but there's less Winstons being played right now. Not that much ball, not that much D.Va. Although D.Va doesn't really like Giga Dive unless someone's really caught out. She's kind of like a in-between. So, you know, if you're playing a full Brawl comp, I think there's other support options, which is why I can't rate her higher any higher. Like she's good fundamentally, but she's like will be strong or very strong depending on the meta. But I don't think she can ever go lower no matter what the meta because she is kind of, uh, you know, just reliable. So I'm going to put her in B plus there and also B plus for everybody else. Ilari. Okay. Ilari had a slight nerf on her secondary fire beam healing, but her offensive DPS power is honestly just too good. Now that, you know, the entire season is finished out, I think she is S tier in top 500. Her damage is actually very forgiving because of the size of the projectile it's a hit scan but each shot from a lari has like a, a projectile it's it's thicker than like a cassidy or like an ash bullet you'll notice it's way easier to land your shots on this hero compared to them right because of that simplicity i've actually seen a lot of dps players that i know swap to just one tricking a lari on support and they've now like ranked higher than me on support and i've been playing support for years and years and years and some of my damage friends who barely ever play support they don't need to have support fundamentals they just play a lari and play it like a dps and they're just killing it right now despite like just being able to deal that much damage and absolutely destroy she actually has one of the best single target healings in the game when the pylon's active it's like it's you put the pylon up and you don't have to think of, well, you have to think about the placement, but like it just does the job for you. So they like the DPS players put the pylon up and they just sit there and DPS and just generate so much value for the team. But in the rare case, they do have to heal with that beam. It's a very short duration. It's like three seconds if you hold it, but the beam is like 105 HPS. If the pylon's pumping heals, a single target at the same time goes from zero back to 200 HP instantly, which is why Orissa and Bastion were so annoying last season. Cause if you take the Orissa down, kind of low if the alari if the pylon's pumping the orissa and the alari decides to beam the orissa she's back to full especially if he's fortified and taking half damage absolutely insane and this clip on twitter which we can play right now with um this genji player hiku uh he was nano blade and he couldn't cut through the alari with the pylon and the beam healing granted the kiriko was also healing but still is that the point is there is that she has fully replaced Zenyatta in traditional poke comps. Like, who cares about defensive alts like Transcendence if the enemy team is just simply dead? So, S tier. For everyone else, I would say she's still great in A tier, but, you know, tone back a few tiers because of the skill floor. You do It does require a lot of mechanical aim. Kiriko. 
Ah. For some reason, some people really believe she's not that good right now, but like, I think she's a great flexible choice in ranked if someone on your team can't play either Ana, Bap, or Ilari in this meta, right? She's still got great verticality, good high ground control. Suzu is still very annoying for a lot of people, and she's got great playmaking with Kitsune Rush. It's a very good team. Like, go, go, go. We can win this team fight tempo ultimate. So I still think she's strong in A tier. And for everyone else, maybe down a tier, probably B plus at good. Life Weaver. Now, Life Weaver used to be D tier right? He used to be so bad. But right now, I think Life Weaver is really good at what he does for his niche. And you know what his niche is? Raw healing and incredible personal high survivability right now. 225 HP base health with a dash that gives you 50 HP. He's basically 275 HP support. And he can paddle platform in the sky to stop like a, a lot of the flankers from completely one shotting. Asombra can't 100 to zero him anymore. Neither can a uh, a tracer because he just goes up in the sky and you don't have aim anymore and you can't aim at him excuse me i think in the high ranks though like he's really good at what he does but in the high ranks of course playing flex supports like bap and alari if you can play them just play them uh but if you don't have any like mechanical aim that's okay you can still play life weaver and get a lot of good value for your team right now because his healing is actually quite absurd it's actually less about playmaking with the grip everyone thought you had to grip them offensively defensively and that's how you win or platform them out or well, we speak about platform it does counter a lot of alts like the abyssal alt and zarya alt and sig alt etc etc but i actually think it's just less about that and more about just simply living surviving as life weaver which you can and then just keep pumping those heals until you build the tree. And then once you have that tree, that's just so much HP and overhealth. You can't burn through, and that's just what wins your team fight. And the, event, and the enemy team eventually falls over. Um, so I think he's okay. I think he's. I wouldn't say he's like good, good. Well, I actually think he's better than okay. I'm gonna put him in good right now in top 500. Like gone are the days where he used to be in D tier. But for everyone else, he's better than good. I think he's very strong. Uh, again, because of that sustained survivability. Heal botting is OP and gold and below. I know everyone, you're supposed to do damage to like climb up eventually, but if we're talking strictly about the average game and bronze, silver, gold, in gold, you, you're not striving to be top 500 by tomorrow, which is, you know, when you're playing the flex supports, which is a little easier. You can still play Life Weaver and get to top 500, by the way. But I'm just saying, if you're trying to go from silver to gold or gold to plat one rank at a time, just fundamental healing on Life Weaver, surviving and putting the tree up whenever you have it for tempo, is good enough to climb one rank at a time. Seriously, it really is. A plus. Okay, Lucio. Lucio's returned in top 500 quite a bit this season, uh, especially in comps that are not running the Sigma poke, right? He's essential for brawl comps with like Darker Queen, Ramatra, Orisa, Reinhardt. Um, and for that reason, I think he's actually A tier. I see him a lot right now. For everyone else, mm, good in B plus. Teams don't utilize the speed as efficiently here, so he often just exists, but sometimes existing is enough depending on the skill rating you're at. I think Lucio's in this place where he's uh, good enough to, to, by just simply existing, maybe up to gold, then it tapers off in gold plat and starts coming online again in diamond and above where teams do worry a little bit more about team comps. And even then, diamond and above Lucio players have pretty good wall ride mechanics, certainly better than mine, I don't play much Lucio. They can switch their play style to Reddit, Lucio, and assassinate. Uh, which is actually quite viable in the right circumstances. So, yeah, I think Lucio's fine right now. Good, good and strong, excuse me, not just fine. Mercy. Hmm. Mercy feels rough, according to the Mercy mains I've listened to lately. Mostly due to the movement and the restrictiveness of uh, Guardian Angel, with the cooldown being punished if you do perform movement tech at the high levels. But honestly, as a non-Mercy player, watching from the outside looking in, she still feels quite good like not great or not as strong as the flex supports but like she's good you know especially um in the right comps let's just say a bastion for example we i did mention bapillari but like a pocketed bastion is can still absolutely dominate games you know you can res if they make a mistake i've seen a, uh, a lot of mercy players on ladder still have a lot of success right now much more than zen which we'll get to in a bit so i'm gonna put her in b plus in top 500 for everyone else I don't think much has changed. A little bit better than B+, strong, arguably very strong. Uh, but she's just reliable, right? Uh, Mercy's be mercying in A tier. Reliable, slippery. Well, she's always gonna be picked no matter what. I think she's fine where she's at there. Moira. Moira's a hero where in the high ranks, she's really only played by Moira one tricks. There's never really an instance that I can recall where someone goes, man, Karki, can you swap to Moira? Because she's so good. 
doesn't really happen. That being said, compositionally, she's honestly pretty good with Lucio, right? You can run the Lucio Moira Brawl variation and replace the Baptiste with the Moira and then just go all in with the team. But in high level ranked players, like not all of them, but most of them have pretty good mechanical aim. And honestly, if you can aim, you can generate more value with Baptiste in my opinion. Uh, or I guess it's less about the argument of more value, or sorry, generating more value, but he's, Bap has less counters per se. There's less things that can annoy Baptiste than a Moira, for example, because Moira, you've a diva on the enemy team, eats every orb, you get anteed, you just have to like fade out a lot. You know what I mean? Moira's a bit more one dimensional in that case. If you do opt into that flanky, you know, Moira style where when the brawl comp isn't working, it's a little cheesy, but it really can be effective if the enemy teams don't respond to you. You get free coalescences, there's no CC. Uh, and I'll find, you'll find in ranked games, that does happen a lot. So I'll put Moira as the okay in the B tier. Like she's fine, top 500. But for everyone else, uh, I actually think she's better than fine. She's arguably very strong. I put her up here almost every season because she's... You know, very low skill floor, but just generates so much baseline value without needing to do much. So much good heal bot healing if you want to opt in that route. Easy DPS if you just chuck a damage orb and just suck. A lot of players don't know how to respond to that and they just die. Yeah, just a lot of free value, so I think she's always going to be a very strong pick. Finally for Zen, this might be a hot take, I mentioned it earlier, but I think he's down here in C tier in top 500. He's below average. Especially if the new Sombra is being played right now. He's like, Zen is like one of the supports that has no tools to fight her back. If you get hit by a virus right now, as Zen, you don't have Transcendence, for example, you need your other support to help you, or else you're probably dead. In addition, the Discord Orb nerfs from a few seasons ago, like, I remember at first I was like, ah, it feels fine, but like, over time, I'm like, you know, I sort of do notice it, where like, I'm not close enough to apply the Discord right now. At least that's what I found. And, you know, why rely on the uh, on and off Discord orb, the, the potential, you know, 100 to 0 threats from the enemy teams from if they swap to flankers? Um, and why rely on the Transcendence Defensive Alt when you can just play Alari now as your poke replacement, right? And just outright kill the enemy. And you can have higher healing on Alari. And that's why I think Zen players are very rare now. I think I've seen one Zenyatta in the last 100 games. One of them, okay, maybe two if you can count myself. I played I played Zen a little bit early on with the Sigma uh, Bap Zen before I realized Ilari is just like safer and more reliable and less counters. Um, and like the one other time I saw another person play Zenyatta, they played it for like two minutes and then they, they swapped because like, you know, if the enemy team swaps to like a dive or something, you know, to actually stop the Zen because the Zen's popping off, that ends up being effective. So yeah. I, th I think he's actually below average right now. And I browse the leaderboards. He's just not being picked at all. Alari Bap has completely replaced him in poke. For everyone else, not as bad. Maybe up one to okay, you know, in the B tier. And yeah, that's my spiel on Zen. And that is the end of my two tier lists for this season. I know you probably skipped down here to see it all. And that's okay. You can agree or disagree with me. I'm just going to toot my own horn and say that when I do look back on my previous season tier lists, uh, for my predictions and feel for the meta. I will say they were honestly pretty accurate when all was said and done. That's all I'm going to say. All right, see you on stream for the Twitch drops. Peace.